this is my latest project. It's going to be a fireplace mantle. And uh, I've got some fluting here. And I want to make a jig that I can do the fluting on. And I'm going to show you what I've come up with. It took me a day to build the jig. I've made quite a few mantles. I'd say four or five now. And um, fluting is pretty common for mantles. I made a jig that I can make a, a fluted column uh, a little longer, a little shorter than what I have. So I add some flexibility to the jig I built. This is my fluting jig. I started off with this small DeWalt router as the uh, fluting tool. It's a four inch wide base. So I'm just simulating this as the wall, but as I'd bring it down, there'd be a little bit of a rocking motion just to get everything right. And then you go into the wood and then you go. And what I found was that uh, end of the flute, there was a little bit of milling issue there, a little bit of a uh, um, imperfection. So I decided I'd go with a uh, larger router base. So what I decided to do is go with the plunge router base. And when I put that in, what I found is that the base of the router was not four inches across like this one. It was about four and a half, four and three eighths, something like that. So this jig would not work. So the router base would not fit in this four inch gap here. So uh, instead of building a new jig, I decided to modify this. I put a rabbit right here and on this side, and now the base can slide down. The uh, router will clear now this, this area here. What I did is I built a four inch wide spacer that now will fit in here. If you built this out of uh, half inch plywood instead of three quarter, in the case of the DeWalt plunge router, you wouldn't need this spacer. So you'd have the, uh, the, the new plunge router clear acrylic base. It would fit in here, and this wouldn't be an issue anymore. So if you were to build this, you wouldn't cut this rabbit if you start off with the right dimension and not the uh, fixed base. Instead, if you use the DeWalt plunge router base to make your jig, make this piece half inch, and you won't have to make this spacer. Okay, and then you just increase this to the, of course, the width of the uh, plunge router. But in the case of the uh, DeWalt, if you make this half inch, I have Porter Cable edge guide rods going in the side for the rods to, to clear this top. So in that case, if you weren't, you'd need a spacer. The uh, Porter Cable edge guide, but the rods that plug into the plunge router, they'll clear half an inch without needing this much of a gap. Now I will show you some of the features of this fluting jig I built. A half inch dado with a half inch space, half inch dado, half inch space. I do have a, uh, a little clip to show you how to make that in case you don't know how to do that kind of stuff. On my jig I prefer to have these indexers, these maple strips here to move it around. I added these two on the outside because I thought I'd need them for stability. Um, I made these long so I can lift up as I'm working and I'll show you when I um, demonstrate the jig. You can also make it so the notches fit in between each other and, and index it that way. I added this block here and also one at the other end. These, this is identical at the other end. And this stops the wood from going that direction. And the strip down at the other end stops it from moving this way. So anytime you index for a flute, you're always getting the same length flute. Okay, that's my center. That's going to be my center flute. I also have red here and red here and also at the other end so I can't skew the jig and I know at that point that's where I'm registered if I've got this jig on and I can see those two on the outside that one and that one I know my center line is, is dead center on here. This is a dry run of the indexing so if I have my router on I run it across route take it off index if I'm going in this direction Route it again. There's no, nothing needs to be clamped down or anything like that. I was going in the other direction. Now I just move it to that one end. As you can see here, there's a one here, and at the other end there is also another one, so I know I'm set up right. And on the other side, going this way, I have a corresponding seven at the front and a seven down here at the back. And that's how you cut your flutes. This space in here is 32 inches, so I can do a 32-inch piece. And the reason I selected that size is uh, I'm only using this jig for the half inch flutes for mantle um, buildings. I've got this three layered glued piece of tempered masonite. This is to take up the space between the base of the jig 
to the bottom of this jig here, the top piece. So when I put a piece in there, it's the equivalent uh, of this space here, or very close to it. I try to just get kind of close, and that helps out. So I unscrew it, and I can change it out. If I have a thicker piece I want to make a fluted column on, I would just make a new one of these to the size that I need. So I'd have several of these for different uh, variations in woods, and they'd, I, I don't need to throw anything away. I can just keep using them. With this design, again, uh, mine is only rabbited because of my um, my router, and I didn't want to rebuild this. But if you look at this, if you have your router just riding in here, the only thing this jig is doing on top is holding your router in the position this way or this way, not up and down. So you can put it down, and it doesn't affect anything. And since it's riding on the piece of wood that's getting routed, you always have a uniform depth of flute. This wall will stop the router to where that is the stop point of the flute. So if I wanted it very the distance of where it stopped and started, I have these little stops here. And I'll put one on. It's kind of cheesy looking. But what I'll do is I'll take off the um, double-sided tape, press down, and when my router hits that, that's where it stops. I also have one for this end. And these little blocks um, help register to be square. And again, I've got two pieces of double-sided tape. And I'll put that on and I'll press down just so we can see them at war. I have that center line there and I also have it at the other end. I also, in this case, I've got an 8 inch wide board and I'm putting a line 4 inches in, both ends. And what I'll do is I'll peel off that double sided tape and I'll place this board wherever I want in this direction, okay? But then I will line up that line right there, press down. And do the same thing at this line and press down. Now my piece is secured to the board. Uh, you can put as much tape as you feel comfortable with, but I found that two pieces on each end work for me. Wipe down the surface and I wipe the underside of this off. Got the double sided tape on. And you can see how particular I am about the alignment of that center line. Here's the underside of the jig, just so you can see how it's done. I'm going to put this on now so you can see where it's placed. I'm going for the center line and then the center line there. And again, I'm watching. I've got the red there, the red there, and at the other end. So I'm dead center. Everything's got the red. And I've got it numbered. You can number it any way you want. The letters mean absolutely nothing. That was just me trying to figure out how to come up with some type of... Um, indexing mistake-free uh, fluting and that was the numbering system so if I've got a one here I should have a one at the other end and I, if I have a five here I should have a five at the other end and as I index it left and right the numbers of course I, I won't see the five I'll see the six I won't see the six I'll see the seven and this side the one goes away I see a two then a three and so on all right so when I'm lifting up the jig on both uh, sides I've got these extended ones and that just makes it easier to pick up all right, so I've got this DeWalt plunge route. I'm going to bring that out now. And it's going to ride in there. You see the spacer. Here's that gap. If you don't use 3 quarters inch thick and make this half inch and use this router with its regular base plate, you'll clear this. In my case, the spacer is also uh, necessary for that situation. So, got that in there. And what I'll be able to do is I'm going to run this thing. Um, I took an old yoga mat. And I made um, a piece that goes around the bit area. And that is for dust collection when I press it down. The other thing is, um, they're all held on by Velcro. Okay, This one here, this masking tape, I just tear that off. But that stops the hose from sliding. Because when I run this tool, put it down, I'm getting all the dust here. But the nature of the fluted bit is it'll always leave in the channel. And that would be this side. This is going to be wayside it'll leave a big pile of sawdust. And you want to get rid of that, one, because it's in the way. That way, two, you can see how your flute looks. And uh, it will cause problems depending on how far you drive this this way or the other way. Uh, so I'll go all the way to the end. If this board was really long, it piles up. That holds it in position. These hold it on. I got my power cord tied on it. I've got this thing here, this hold here. And that's where I put my beer when I'm working. I generally like to have a couple when I'm making some tools. 
Now that is actually going to be for my secondary dust collection because when I run this tool, if this was your last uh, routed spot, that's that would prevent the uh, consistency that you need at that end or the other. Again, try to collect as much as you can and you'll see how this thing works. I believe in having two hands on my router when I work and this helps me uh, accomplish that and have a hose right on the flute that I'm cutting. You can actually feel the heat um, building up from uh, just the fluting itself. Now look at all the dust. And there you go, you can see it all. So that's the buildup I was talking about that could get in your way. After you finish routing and you have to sand the flutes just to get any imperfections or burn marks you want to get rid of, and also the, to um, ease these edges here a little bit, these sharp edges. I made this tool. I've got a V-channel and a scrap piece of wood glued in the dowel. Uh, preferably just a little bit smaller than the flute. It'll glide a little bit better. And then I get some double-sided tape and I put it on the back of the sandpaper, cut it and put it on here. And I've got these hand cutouts there so my hand's not sliding off it, I get better control. And then I just move it back and forth. This is the world's shortest flute, but just to kind of show you how it works. And then when I want to get the edges, I just take it like that. And then I do the other side, same way, I do it just like that, and get it right there. And that'll clean it up, and then, like I said, it'll ease the edges a little bit. I'm sure many of you have done this before. So I got a fence and I got a dado hole there and then I got a pin for the next one it cuts to ride through. So when I put this on, all right, and I run it through, zip, okay. When I bring it back out, I lift up on the board, bring it over one piece. I, that dado I just cut sits right on there and then cut the next one. The width of the board will determine how many dados I put in one piece. And again, that's all I do. Just slide it in, come back. It's very safe, um, works really well.